You clearly know what we teach and you don't believe the same thing that we teach. I, I do not. You're right. Okay, so your whole reason for being up here ain't to be edified, it's to go back and forth. That's your whole reason. Right. Now, because what you're doing is you're talking in circles. Uh, what you're doing, what you're doing is you're talking in circles. Because under one breath, you're saying that we're only justified through grace and faith. Then on the next breath, you're saying, no, we got to keep the law. So what we're saying is that you have to keep the law and the faith of Christ. Do you agree with that or no? Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. All right, let's read this real quick. Let's go, soldier. Let's Revelation. I'm not about to play games with this, brother. Come chapter on, 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Give me Revelation, the last book in the Bible. And let's read it again. And then we're going to get what he's teaching. Revelation, read it. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. So we out here teaching our people that they must keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. And what is your argument against that? Okay, so now, what's your point of being here? What point are you trying to make with us reading Galatians? You guys are talking about shaving your beard. You guys are talking about ordinances that really we shouldn't be keeping like that. Okay, so here, there it is. There's the contradiction. Now tell me what laws should we keep and which ones we shouldn't. Please tell me, because I believe that we should follow the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? The spirit of love. Where is that at in the Bible? No, 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 no. Where is that scripture? I'm asking you something plain. The Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's right. Can I speak? I'm asking you for the scriptures. Don't you? You don't need confirmation from nobody. I'm asking you Romans, for the scriptures. Romans, Romans 13 and 10. Let's read Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. This is the book of Romans. Chapter 13, verse 10. Here's the problem. That seminary school that they sending people to is teaching people white supremacy. It's not Look, teaching Lord. people the Bible. Look. There was not, there is not one modern day Christian that did what the apostles did in the Bible. Not one. Watch this. Hey, bro. Trust me. Trust me. You listening to Satan? Hold this. Give me Mark. Hold that before I read it. This is our platform. I'm going to run it the way I want to run it. Right. Get me Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 15. Hey, this Get is up. for you, bro, because you've been standing here a long time. I want to show you what this spirit is. Read it. And these are they by the wayside. That's you by the wayside, meaning you are a person that's standing by the side listening to the Bible. Read. Well, the word is sown. Because we actually teaching you the Bible, trying to get you back your heritage and nationality. Read. But. When they have heard, but as we're teaching you the word, when you hear us teaching, what happens? Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that is sown in their hearts. Satan come immediately to try to take away. All of these brothers packed up, drove an hour and 15 minutes to get here just for him to pull up in a car. You get what I'm saying? We not no unlearned dumb men. As a matter of fact, he don't even know what he teaches. He's getting instructions off of the phone. Right. right. He don't know nothing that he's talking about. Now, let's get it. Give me Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1. Let me explain who the Galatians are. Let me explain the laws that we should and should not be keeping. This is simple. It's simple. When God say keep his laws, that's what it means. That's it. You don't pick and choose what laws you want to keep and don't want to keep. That ain't how this thing works. Bring that is Christianity confusion. That's what that is. Read. I'm done dealing with you. Let's go. Read. The book of Galatians, chapter 1 and verse 1. So here, let's find out who the Galatians are. Read it. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ uh -huh. and God the Father. Who raised him from the dead? Read. And all the brethren. And all went, the who? And all the brethren. And all the who? And all the brethren. So who are the Galatians to Paul? His brothers. Oh. Romans chapter nine and verse one. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure this is clear because he made the statement when he first got up here. But not all Israel is Israel. He don't even know what that means right. because he's stuck in Christianity. Bring it up. He don't know the Bible. The same stuff that he talking is the same stuff that the slave master taught the slaves when they was on the plantation. That's the same doctrine. White Jesus, 
Jesus Christ being born December 25th, right. rabbits laying eggs on Easter, this is the doctrine he coming with. Right. We ain't unfamiliar with what he talking about. Read the Bible. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I like not. Here's what they realize. He's trying to push the same agenda that Christianity been pushing across the whole globe. Right. Our communities are filled with Christian churches right. that don't benefit our people. Right. Now here we come teaching our people you must keep God's laws. Right. That there's a higher, there's more that you have to do in order to say you love God, in order to satisfy God. Right. And men like him want to bring you back to being lawless individuals. Right. When you look at a brother that's from the hood and you tell him you ain't got to keep God's laws, you know what that means? I can steal, I can kill, right. I can rob. Right. Read. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. Read. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For whom? For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. My brethren? My, my kinsmen. My kinsmen, read. According to the flesh. Who are who? Who are Israelites? Who is his brethren? Who is his brethren? I don't have to do nothing that you tell. You don't understand. Right. You might as well walk off. You're done. I'm not dealing with you no more. That's right. Brother in the back. Who's his brethren? Read it again. Who are Israelites? Who's his brethren? Read that. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? To whom pertaineth the adoption? Read. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenant. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. So when you... When you think about the Old Covenant, the New Covenant, it pertained to the Israelites. When you think about the giving of the law, it was given to the Israelites. Now, let's explain what's going on with you not having to keep the law. Let's explain it. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. This is the book of Hebrews. The brother, saying, the brother is saying, because I don't want nobody to think I'm putting nothing in your mouth. He said, you're thinking about... You're talking about like shaving your beard and stuff like that. We don't have to do that anymore. Right? Is that not what he said? Now watch this. Because I keep saying that the brother said that we don't have to keep God's laws. Right? And he's saying I never said that. But he said you're teaching people to keep their beard and we don't have to do that no more. What is that? It's a law. Right. The beard is a law. So he don't he he he's so confidently wrong. Right. <laughs> he's wrong and he don't even understand he wrong. You cannot tell somebody you don't have to you we we have to keep God's laws. But not that law right there, not the one with the beard. Oh not that one right there with the fringe. It's not this one right here. So which ones you gotta keep and not keep? This is Christian conjecture. Okay, I do have a question. Do we, do we, do we Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. The only thing that Christ did away with, we about to read it right now out of the Bible. If it ain't mentioned here, you still got to do it. Read the Bible. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. What is the law that had a shadow of good things to come? You know anything about the Bible, young man? If somebody in the Old Testament, listen to what I'm saying. If I did something wrong, what would I have to do to be forgiven of my sins in the Old Testament? Say it again. Okay, so I'm going to bring you up to speed. In the Old Testament, they used to have to kill a certain animal for certain things they did. Right. It was certain sins that if they committed them in the Old Testament, there was no sacrifice for that. They had to die themselves. Like, for instance, if you was homosexual, there was no animal that you could sacrifice for the Lord to forgive you of that sin. So you would have to die in the Old Testament. You get what I'm saying? Now go back to Hebrews. Let's read it again. I need to give you a little backstory. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Read. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. The shadow of good things to come was the old animal sacrifice. And now Christ is going to come in the future. Go ahead. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices. Can never with those what? Sacrifices. Uh -huh. Which they offer year by year. Because we would offer sacrifices all the time to God. All the time. And at, it was to the point where the Lord got tired of accepting Israelite sacrifices. You know why? Let's say you got money, right? So you got a bunch of goats. You got a bunch of lambs, right? What you would do is you go do something that's against God's laws. Because you knew you had a lamb at the crib that you could sacrifice. That's how the Israelites was rolling. That's why he said those sacrifices could never make the comers unto perfect. Why? Because our minds was corrupted. Go ahead. Make the comers there unto perfect. 
For then would they not have ceased to be offered. He said, because if it was, then they wouldn't have to keep sacrificing. Because they might they would have got their mind right. That's what he's saying in Hebrews. Come on. Because that the work that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Uh-huh. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance of again made of made of sins every year. Read. For it is not possible that the blood Listen, this is what Christ came and did away with. Listen good. For it is not possible, read. That the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. He said it's not possible that we still use bulls and goats to take away sin. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he when he cometh into the world, he said, Wherefore, when Christ came into the world, read. He said, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. Uh -huh. But a body has thou prepared me. But a body has God prepared Christ. What is he saying? That Christ would be the ultimate sacrifice for the people. That's why we don't kill bulls and goats no more. Now let me ask you something. What that got to do with somebody that's committing murder? What does that have to do with somebody that's breaking the Lord's Sabbath? That don't mean don't do it. That don't mean now you don't have to, you don't have to keep a beard. That don't mean now you don't have to wear fringes. That simply means for the mistakes that you made, the sins you committed, now Christ died for those sins so you can be forgiven. Instead of you having to kill a goat. That's it. But what Christianity has done, they've taught us to pick and choose which commandments you're supposed to pick. Which is why this brother standing in front of me go to church on Sundays. Right. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to go to church on Sundays. Right. That's why this brother in front of me celebrate Christmas. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to celebrate Christmas. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you Christ is born on December 25th. Guess what? This brother shaved his beard because he don't believe in God. He don't even know what sin is. Read that. So do you go to church on Sundays? Do you go? Do you do you celebrate Christmas? Do you celebrate Easter? Let your spirit bear witness. Watch this. Give me the book of First John, chapter three, chapter five, and verse three. First John, chapter five, and verse three. The book. So what are you? A seven day Adventist? No. What are you? What are you? What are you? What that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Watch this. Listen good. Listen good. Listen good. What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? Deny yourself what? Flesh. Anything What's like flesh? Whether that's hatred, uh, malice, uh, grievous things, like murder. Listen, uh, listen to what this brother is saying, because I agree 100%. You know what he call, what he's saying? He calling out different laws in the Bible. That's, that's right. right. I don't even understand he calling out right. different laws in the Bible that's with right. his simple self, man. Read that. First John chapter 5 verse 3. You know, so this is the love of God. Because this brother don't know the love of God because the white man he got on the phone don't know the love of God. Or the white man that, that taught him don't know the God, don't know the Bible. You're you rolling in that same spirit, brother. You are white Jesus personified. You, you and the people that believe the stuff you believe is the reason all of our communities look the way they look. Right. Because a brother's just like you that don't teach nothing concerning the Bible. You, you teach man-made traditions and philosophies of men. The apostles never taught not to keep your beard. The apostles never taught not to wear fringes. The apostles never taught not to keep the Sabbath day. The apostles never taught none of that. Yes, read. That we keep his commandments. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. See that? He said the love of God is that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Now watch this. Get me did no sin. I'm going to show you how to follow Christ. Because this is not a follower of Christ. This is a follower of the devil that the Bible speaks of. Y'all are the devil. This is the same thing that slaves were taught on the plantation that he coming up to us trying to teach. And he actually think he's doing something for somebody. You know who he, he here for? This guy right here. White Jesus and all of his philosophies. And I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. Come on. The book of First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. I get tired of these overly religious black Negroes. And, the, and, and Christianity ain't never done nothing for our people. Must nothing. We still at the bottom of society, last hired, first fired, because of his philosophy. 
How can a slave and a slave master serve the same God? And yet this ain't, nobody's holding the gun in his hand making a minute. He's just so delusional he choose to believe that mess. You had the slave master that was making slaves pick cotton, turning to their slaves and making their slaves celebrate the same God. Now the Negro is free, he still want to celebrate the same God. Bring it out. Read. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. I'm going to show you how to follow Christ right here. Because he said he'll follow a Christ, but he said he ain't keep a beard. But didn't Christ have a beard? Right. Didn't the scripture say they plucked Christ's beard off? Right. Didn't Christ wear fringes? Right. Didn't it say that they touched the hem of his garment? Right. Home. Read that. For even hereunto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, uh -huh. leaving us an example. Christ left us an example. Can you read what Peter says the example Christ left us was? That ye should follow his steps, uh -huh. who did no sin. Read it again. For even hereunto were ye come, because Christ also suffered for us, uh -huh. leaving us an example. That ye should follow his steps, uh -huh. who did no sin. He said Christ did what? No sin. Sin. One more time for this brother that say he followed Christ. Who did what? No sin. Now let me ask you the question. Here's the question. What is sin? Of the law. Oh man. This brother, hey bro, you have drank Christianity worse than crack, man. I'm telling you straight. Because you know that sin is the transgression of the law. Then you turn it around and try to name off laws that you ain't got to keep. That's sin, my simple brother. Read that. First John chapter 3 verse 4. I'm going to read what sin is. Whosoever committed sin. Because I don't need confirmations from the devil. This brother needs to learn. Go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgressive also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the breaking of God's laws. Now watch this. Have you ever sinned? Give me beer. Have you ever sinned? Give me beer. Have you sinned? This brother's simple. This brother is asking me if I ever sinned. It's rather simple. What they got to do with what we teach? Them? What does that have to do with what we're teaching? And keeping the commandments, which we read out of. Did you hear? Did you hear the command when it said, "These are they that keep the faith in Jesus and the commandments"? Watch this. Leviticus chapter twenty-one, verse five. They shall not make baldness upon their head. This is a law. It says, "Don't shave your head." Right? Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shave your beard, right? It says that in the Bible. Can we shave our head today? Listen, listen again. Can we shave our head today? Can we shave our head today? Can we shave our beard? <laughs> That's how you know he don't have the spirit of God on him. Nobody that is a father, you just read, we just read that Christ left an example who did no sin, that we should follow him. I, read the scripture that says that you can't shave your head. Ask him, can you shave your head? He said, yeah, you can shave your head. That's Christianity. Right. That's why we teach against Christianity. A hundred percent. Matthew chapter 15. That's a different sin, brother. This dude is simple. The brother said, if you shave your head, but... If you don't shave your head, but you lusting after a woman, is that still good? What did you say? I didn't say that. Say it again. Say it again, because it's so stupid. Repeat it. Come on. Okay, I got you. I said if you if you shave, I mean, don't shave your head. If you don't shave your head, okay. go ahead. But then you lust after another woman. Isn't that seen the same in the eyes of a holy God? Why? Why? Let me ask you something. No, no, no. I'll let you make your statement. So he said if you don't shave your head and you keep hair on your head. But you lust after a woman, is that unholy in the eyesight of God, right? Absolutely. You know why? Because you kept one commandment and broke another one. That's right. good. You're not allowed to shave your head or lust. So, keep going. so we are righteous in ourselves. No, you're not righteous in yourself. The scriptures say your righteousness is as filthy rags. Yes. So why are we boasting in our righteousness? No, no, no. Watch this. Get me what righteousness is in the Bible. This dude is simple, man. Well, you know what boasting in your righteousness means? <laughs> this guy, this guy's simple. I'm gonna show you what righteousness is. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse twenty-five. Uh -huh. And it shall be our righteousness if what? If we observe to do all these commandments. If we do what? All these commandments. The scriptures say that our righteousness is keeping the commandments. That's, right. That's our righteousness that we're supposed to observe. 
When you read the New Testament, it's talking about their righteousness. It's talking about the traditions of men that they was keeping. Like extending, like the phylacteries and extending the borders of their garments and things like that. You have no understanding in the Bible. You have no understanding of the Bible. So you're going to tell me that when Christ, when Christ come back, what is he judging people on? In what? In Based off what? Whether or not they believe in white Jesus? No, no. Based off if they have faith. Let me ask, what color is Christ? What color is Christ? What color is Christ? Thank you. At least you got enough sense to admit it. Come on. You all right. Yeah, that's all right. You can repent, bro. You can repent. You can repent and keep the commandments. Go ahead. What you want? Only God grants repentance. Matthew 15, this brother said? said, you don't give me the right to repent. Only God grants repentance. When did I say this brother had the right? Uh, that I, I granted him the right to repent. You said you can repent. Yeah, you can repent, brother. Can we all? So we all repent. <laughs> what, you want, what we at? Matthew 15. Oh, uh, no, Matthew 5 and 17. You wasn't part of this? You wasn't part of this at all. You wasn't part of this at all. You know what you were? You are a false brethren crept in unawares. That's right. what you were. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Uh-huh. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Hey, somebody find me uh, uh, doting about questions. That's what I want. Go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. The scriptures say, don't think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. It's plain English. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's what it's about. Turn around. That's what it's about. For Timothy 6. What I just say earlier. It's about the slave and the slave master coming right. together. And guess what? He's going to have a million people that follow it. Because a million Negroes is in Christianity right now. Right. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, listen, one jot. Listen to what it said. It's saying until heaven and earth pass. Are we still on the earth right now? Can you look up and see the heavens? Listen to what it says. Read. One jot. One comma. Or one tittle. Or one period. Shall in no wise pass from the law. Shall in no wise pass from the law. So who are you going to believe? You gonna believe the scriptures yeah, know, or your lying ears? You get what I'm saying? This this stuff, what we teaching right now, these are Bible spaces. Right. Give me that. Hey, what was that scripture I wanted? First Timothy six and four. Give me first Timothy six and four. Ask him. Because like Hey, don't entertain that demon, man. He doesn't let me talk. The book of first Timothy, chapter six, verse four. He said I didn't let him talk. I'm gonna show you why. He is proud, knowing nothing. Hold on, where we at? Just yep, that's what I'm. Up. That's what I want. Listen, listen to this. Read. First Timothy chapter six verse four. Uh huh. He is proud. This brother right here is proud. It takes a proud man to see us set up trying to teach the people. Park his car, get out, and come teach the exact opposite. Stand in opposition. Let me ask you something. If he know the Bible so well, why he ain't out on the corner teaching the people? Right. You ever thought about that? Why ain't he got his own bullhorn or his mic and out here doing what he think white Jesus need him to do and teach the people? Right. Why? Here's why. Read it. He is proud, knowing nothing. This brother is proud and knows nothing but what? But doting about questions. But doing what? But doting about questions. After you right. answer one question, he got another question to follow it up. You answer that one, he got another question to follow it up. You answer that one, he got another question. That's called doting about questions. And what? And stripes of words. And what? And stripes of words. And stripes of words. Is that not this brother spirit? One question after we answer one question, on to the next one. Now he yelling, do we have to get circumcised 500 times? Well, here's the question. I answered your other 15 questions. You ain't humbled down yet. So why would I Why would I answer the next one? He says, show us what they be that we may consider whether or not what you're speaking is the actual truth. That's right. We in the age of information. We not no dumb, docile, we shall overcome generation. Right. Make sense to me. That's what God is saying. Make it make sense. And that's one thing Christianity ain't never been able to do for our people. Right. They relied on us just believing. Just believe, oh brother, just believe. No, 
prove to me who I am out the Bible. Read. Huh. And know the latter end of them. Uh-huh. Or declare us things to come. He said, look in the Bible and show us the things that's coming. Like the famine that's coming to America. Right. That's or right. like the plague that came to America and still here called coronavirus. Right. Predicted in the Bible. Or like the nuclear destruction that's going to end America as the world know it. Christianity will not teach you these things. They want to teach you all, it's all is love. How can you teach love in a place was Babylon the Great? This is the last kingdom of the world. This place is going to be, everything you see is going to be destroyed. And they're trying to teach you how to live great here. Right. No, get your mind right and get ready for God to deliver you out this place. Right. Read that. Show the things that are to come hereafter. Uh-huh. That we may know that ye are God. He says, show us the things that's coming in the future so we may know that your message is as of God. Uh. You know what they're telling you? Sow a seed. Pay your tithes. Right. Buy your kids Christmas gifts. Uh, have an Easter hunt on Easter. Go to church on Sundays. That's not of God, bro. That's not. Yay! Do good or do evil. He said do what? Do good or do evil. It's confusion when you say we have to keep the laws and then I ask you about a couple laws and you say, no, not that one. That's, and he don't even understand how far his mind is gone to even realize that. Imagine your mama say, hey, clean them dishes. And you take a plate. You want me to clean this? No, don't clean that one. Hey, what about this fork? You want me to clean this fork? No, don't clean that fork. That wouldn't make no sense. When your mama say clean the dishes, that means all the dishes need to be clean. When God say keep the commandments, that means all the commandments must be kept. Simple, simple Christians, read. That we may be dismayed and behold it together. Uh -huh. Behold, ye are of nothing. Listen again. Be behold, ye are of nothing. They are of nothing. And it's in the last days that Christianity as the last religion on the earth is finally being exposed for what it is. Right. Because if this was 20 years ago, 50 years ago, we'd all be singing, we shall overcome with our three-piece suits and our church shoes on, marching for justice, right. with white Jesus on our mind. But today we have the ability to read this thing ourselves. They are of nothing, read. And your work of not. And they what? And your work of not. You understand that the Ku Klux Klan brands themselves as a Christian organization? Bring it out. Christian organization. But yet you got black Christians. How do how do how do they go together? Read it. An abomination is he that chooseth you. And what? An abomination is he that chooseth you. And what? An abomination is he that chooseth you. The brother don't even understand that he an abomination. Right. Because right. his ears is stopped when he can't hit a prophet. Mm. And guess what? In that day, then he'll find out that there was a prophet among him. Right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.